kill this fucking store. Hi, you're watching Two Dumb Guys. I'm Brian. This is Ed. Ed, I have a confession. Do you? Yeah, I don't know what we're talking about today. That's my confession. We're talking about confessions. <sighs> Isn't that amazing? Serendipitous. It is serendipitous. And also, I told you a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. I had forgotten. That. We didn't plan this. We did, but we didn't. I, I planned it. I just didn't tell him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take you on a journey. A journey. Through some criminal confessions. Okay. That are, that are, that are just... Voice. They're beautiful. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna take you back to 1983. Two oh, two four. two young British men, Andy Mould and Stephen Dooley. So they work in this like peat bog, and they're out cutting peat and processing. I don't know what the fuck they use peat for. Maybe fertilizing, whatever. But they find something odd, right? While they're digging through, and they get to examine it a little closer, and they're like, that kind of looks like a human head. Mm. So they're like. It's definitely a human head. Let's call, you know, the police and get them out there. So they come out and they check, and they're like, "Yeah, this is this is like the head of a woman." And her boyfriend at the time was their like primary suspect, but they didn't have any info on him. Yeah, you know, they had nothing to tie him to the crime, and they're thinking this might be physical evidence. This is dope. So they round him up, and they're like, "Yeah, we found this head in this this peat bog." And so, dude, you know, I guess maybe because he's British and, you know, he's like, oh, well, you got me. He just confesses outright to the whole thing. Yeah, I killed my ex-old lady because she was threatening to tell people I was gay because apparently homosexuality in 1983 was still illegal in England. Okay. Did not know that. So, yeah, he tells him, like, I killed her. I never thought anybody would find out. I buried her in this peat bog. So, police are like, ah, we got confession. We have got you. They put the cuffs on him, I guess maybe. I don't know how they do it over there. But anyway, they take him away. He's in a holding cell. He's waiting to go to trial. Just before he goes to trial, they use some C-14 dating on this skull. Turns out it's from like 250 AD. <laughs> <laughs> this skull's been in this beat a while. And homie's like, he finds out and he's like, Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and he tries to, like, walk that confession back. Yeah. But then, no. He's in, so he's in jail now. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, why? I'm just thinking, like, from, when I was reading it, I was thinking from my perspective, I'm like, there's no way in hell that I'm going to just admit right then. Yeah. Like, I'm going to wait for them to do some DNA analysis. I've seen forensic files. Okay? <laughs> I'm waiting on the DNA. <laughs> To come in. Because at this point, all he knows is that they found her head. And it's like, okay. Yeah. That doesn't tie him to the crime. Yeah, I know. Just the head. They don't know. even know. He didn't. They, they didn't they even know. That, yeah, they knew she was dead and uh, probably had figured out pretty quickly that she was headless. Well, the rest of the body. So it's like if well, they no, find they, the head. They, they knew she was murdered, but they didn't know where she was. Yeah. Because like he had actually in that very peat bog had buried her body. Yeah. But it wasn't her that they found. But they didn't know. And he just like, he gave it up, man. Yeah, it's like, like. Would you give it up, though? We know we have a murder victim, and he knows that, and he knows that they found a head, and even if it was hers, that doesn't connect him to the crime in any way. Yeah. Unless they found his DNA on there, which I don't know if. He could have got away. I, I think with, in 1983, and this, this fucking body being in a <laughs> bog, for how long was the body in there? I don't think they're going to find his DNA on her in there. Well, it, they, well, it's possible though, because that 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 Pete really preserves bodies, man. Oh, it's like it? mummified. Yeah, it's like dope. so. Peter Peter Ryan Bart was his name, or Peter Renbart. Yeah, Renbart. It's like a hyphenated last name. Which why is your last name hyphenated? That's a question I'm wondering about, right? Maybe there. his parents hyphenated. Maybe so. I don't know. But in '83, yeah, we hyphenating in '83. Were, were we well, on that old, train yet? Well, he would have been born probably. He was. Yeah, he would have been born in like the the it, earliest, like the the sixties. Yeah, you know, he would have at least been in his twenties. He's yeah. married, probably earlier than that. Were we hyphenating back then? Some people were. Were we doing that? Were we I that? Think. Were we progressive like that back in the sixties? I I don't know, but we, this is also in a place where like it's free love. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. This is this is also in a time when uh, homosexuality was still legal. So I'm not a fan like, of free love. 
Yeah. I think love should... They say my love don't cost a thing, <laughs> but I think your love should cost something. You should value yourself. Yeah. Value your love because your love has value. It's about $8.37 <laughs> per, per unit of love. <laughs> so, so now you kind of get the gist of where we're going with this. Okay. You yeah. see what type of confessions are happening here. All right. They're all thematically similar. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about a little man named Tremaine Durham. Okay. Great name. Train Durham in, in 19, uh, or no, excuse me, in 2006, he, he shoots a guy. Okay. Why does he shoot this guy? Well, I'm going to tell you Tremaine's story because it's fucking bonkers and I love it. So Tremaine is arrested and convicted for rape in 1992. Okay. And he goes to jail and he spends eight years in jail in New York. Okay. Right. So he gets out and he's like, Tremaine, he's a, he, he's, he's not, not a visionary. But he's yeah. definitely got ideas for his future. He, he, he wants to get away from the life of crime. So he says, I'm going to start a business. And Tremaine thinks, and what business do you think he comes to? Got an idea of what? what oh, you're what, actually what, asking yeah, me. You Sorry, got I, I thought it was a... I no, no, it's, it's not a setup. You, you got an <laughs> idea of what an cool. ex-con might want to go into? Um... Uh, some sort of new criminal activity. No, no, he wants to get away from that. So his his brilliant idea is dry cleaning. No, he's not, that would have been a good one, but yeah. no, because he's gonna he's gonna run an ice cream truck. Okay. So this is, no, not okay. It's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Furthermore, so 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 you know, like I said, it's a bad idea. You don't want to get into the ice cream truck game. You'll never make any money. I knew a dude who drove an ice cream truck. He didn't make any money. Uh but he buys this. He orders this ice cream truck for eighteen grand. Okay. All right. So he's out eighteen thousand dollars, and then he decides randomly, "Oh sh! Ice cream truck is a stupid business. I need to get my eighteen grand back." So he calls up the company he ordered the truck from. They're out in Oregon, and they're like, "We can't give you your money back. We're building out this truck. Like your truck's gonna be ready next week, dog. Tremaine, you come get this fuck truck. You're not getting your eighteen G's back." So Tremaine's like, "Well, fuck you." And he hops a bus. I mean, he's out 18 grand, you know. He, yeah. he can't afford a flight to Oregon. So yeah. he gets on the mega bus because it's like 30 bucks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes it's $1.99 on the mega bus. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, he, so he takes a bus out to Oregon. And uh, he's looking for, like, the owner of the company. Yeah. But the owner of the company is not there. So he just, like, shoots the first guy he comes up to. Just shoots him dead. And they, they know it's him. You know, they, they put it together real quick. Cops aren't stupid. So they put him in jail, and he's, like, awaiting to go to trial. He's in, he's in for, like, two years waiting on trial. And uh, they notice that he's, he's, he's never admitted to it. Like, and then they notice, like, every time they talk to him, all he does is talk about food. So the prosecutor gets this idea, because he, he talked about, like, how prison food sucks and how he wishes he could have, like, some Popeyes or some KFC. He's always on about food. And the prosecutor's like, you know what? I got an idea. Tremaine, if I get you like a whole bunch of fast food, would you be willing to confess? Knowing that he's going to go to jail for the rest of his life, Tremaine's like, I'm down. <laughs> they spent $41 and bought this fool like a bucket of KFC, some Popeyes, some lasagna and pizza. So fried chicken and Italian food gets Tremaine to confess. <laughs> and now Tremaine is in jail, life in prison. For shooting a dude in cold blood. First degree murder. Yeah. And he's willing to go down that route for some chicken and some pizza. Yeah. He, but he was upset. The irony being not just that he put himself in jail for something because, or they confessed for $41 worth of shit food, is that he's complaining about the jail food, which is now all he eats. Well, yeah, but he got that one <laughs> glorious moment, boy. <laughs> It's like having your last meal first. <laughs> he, took, he took a bucket of original recipe and was just like, I'm in heaven right now. That's, that's but I'm insane. in jail forever. But I'm in heaven right now. This is amazing. Give me some of that lasagna. <laughs> like Garfield motherfucker. Just, yeah, man. I mean, first off, don't, don't, don't do any of the things that Tremaine did. No, no. You don't want to but, follow uh, Tremaine's uh, life path. But, but like, if you do find yourself down that road, don't sell yourself out for a fucking like a chicken and a, some some KFC, some Pizza Hut or something, and it's probably like shit 
pizza. They probably got them like Little Caesars or something. Probably Little Caesar. <laughs> I ate an apple the other day, and you ever get that thing where it irritates your gums when you eat an apple? Yeah. I, I got that like real bad on the lower lip uh, <laughs> since got, yesterday. I got the apple gum. I got yes, exactly. And Work your apple gum <laughs> while I tell you about yeah. my last guy, and then I maybe I'll tell you about the honorable mention if there's time at the end. All right. Uh, Anthony Garcia, 2004. He's convicted for the murder of a liquor store in Pico Rivera. All right. So this Wait, guy murder of a liquor store. Oh, the murder at a liquor store. Oh, excuse okay. me. No, not murder of a liquor store. He didn't <laughs> kill straight store. He didn't <laughs> kill this <laughs> store. <laughs> He's like. Yeah, you may have killed your grandma, but that guy, he killed a whole fucking whore. <laughs> so this dude, right, he's, he's like everywhere. He's out. He's driving on, an, on a suspended license. That's how he gets caught. Yeah. Mistake number so, one. So they pick him up for driving on a suspended license. And when they process him, they take pictures of him. And they know he's a gang guy. So like they always do, they take pictures of his tattoos. A, another cop is like looking through the pictures of the tattoos and one one particular tattoo right on here, right on Anthony Garcia's chest kind of piques his interest. Because he's like, you know what? This tattoo looks kind of like a crime scene photo. Yeah. This fool went and got like the liquor store and like the entire surrounding area, like the scene tattooed on his chest. <laughs> I'm talking identical, dog. Like, he put the convalescent home that was next door to the liquor store in the tattoo. There's, like, a bent lamp post in the front. Like, the cop who saw it said, this could pass as a crime scene sketch. Yeah. And on top of it, he put, Rivera kills. <laughs> why are you going to tattoo the crime scene on your chest? Just why? <laughs> Just get a teardrop. Just tattoo a teardrop. That's all you need. You don't need to get specific. And also, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna commit a big crime, you, that's when you lay low on the little crimes. You yeah, know, you don't drive around with a suspended license. You don't. You've killed someone. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. like a you gang might get thing. away with kill some killing someone if you just fuck. Keep, keep your license up. You don't let your tag expire. Keep, it low. <laughs> keep your lights, uh, it, yeah, your tail you, lights on point yeah. all the time. Don't let your tire run a little bit low. Yeah. They'll pull you over just to be good Samaritans and be like, your tire's running low. And then it's like, hey, I like I see your tattoo. I recognize that. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, you I see, killed somebody. <laughs> what? Why did you do this? But yeah, like he had like, you know, the, the, the shop owner who he had shot, he had, had done this like a peanut, I think. Because people called him like that was his nickname. Oh, okay. Or whatever, and it was just it was. It oh, was it a peanut thing. laying there in a in a puddle of blood? It had like a gunshot through its head. <laughs> because he shot him in the head. Did it look like Mister Peanut? I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't see awesome. a picture of the tattoo. I want a tattoo of Mister Peanut lying in a puddle of his own blood. But I'm just like, dog. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So I mean, you know. Just don't do any of these things. Yeah, don't do not do any of these things to begin with. But if you do them, just don't be stupid after you do them. Keep it, <laughs> keep it on the low. Keep it on the down low. Yeah. Don't, don't, down, don't keep, put it on your chest, literally. Keep it in the basement. And if you got like a sub-basement, keep it down there. <laughs> exactly. That's good advice. You get good advice from us. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I will tell you one little honorable mention real quick. Uh, what was his name? Let me pull it back up. My phone went to sleep. Uh, his name's James Washington out of Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. He's in jail already. <laughs> yeah. He starts to have a heart attack and he confesses to the murder of the, like the brutal murder of this woman. Yeah. Unfortunately for James Washington, I guess nobody ever told him that not all heart attacks are fatal. Yeah. And he falls into that percentage. Yeah. So now, now old James got to go for that. He tried to walk back that confession too. Like, oh no, it's having a heart attack. <laughs> too late, bro. Too late. You're going. You're staying in jail. You're not going to jail because you're already there. You're staying in jail now forever. It's super interesting, and you should look up criminal stuff because it's fun. Yeah, you're gonna find all kind of dumb stuff. Dumb. Just dumb. Stuff. Like 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 when, this show like when people try to steal entire ATMs that's always the best because <laughs> it like every time they do it it, work, it goes very poorly <laughs> just just look up ATM thefts dude let's go steal an ATM <laughs> no we're gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go steal an ATM we're gonna need thanks a for watching winch. thanks for watching I'm stealing an ATM all right I'll drive the truck All the links that money can buy.
You, you should totally click it.